Dale Jr. says there's been zero movement towards acquiring a Cup Series charter, and another Australian Supercars star is coming to NASCAR later this summer. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Lots of NASCAR news to get to today. If you haven't already, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below. Summer storylines are heating up. If you hit that subscribe button, you'll be among the first to hear about the latest NASCAR news as it happens. Let's begin today's episode with the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss are officially Hall eligible. Yesterday, the Hall of Fame revealed the Class of 2024 nominees. Jimmy and Chad are on the ballot for the first time ever, alongside Neil Bonnet, Tim Brewer, Jeff Burton, Carl Edwards, Harry Gant, Harry Hyde, Larry Phillips, and Ricky Rudd. That's the modern era ballot of which two names will be selected to join the Hall of Fame next year. On the pioneer ballot, Sam Hard, AJ Foyt, Banjo Matthews, and Ralph Moody are now joined by Donnie Allison. One of those five names will get voted in next year, but the focus, of course, is on Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss. I think it's safe to say they're going into the Hall of Fame together. They just have to, right? Jimmy and Chad, they won seven championships together. Arguably the greatest driver crew chief pairing of all time. Both deserve the honor of being first ballot Hall of Famers. No disrespect to the many other deserving names on that list, but Jimmy and Chad are more qualified than any of them. I will be shocked if Jimmy and Chad don't go into the Hall of Fame together next year. You know, I wonder if you ask Jimmy and Chad, do they want to go in together? Probably, right? I know they split after 2017. There are some hard feelings there, but I think they've patched things up for the most part since then, right? Like they've worked together, I believe, in you know, IMSA and sports cars the last couple of years. They both worked together at Le Mans with Garage 56. Chad Knauss is the VP of operations or competition over at Hendrick. He was involved in that whole project. Jimmy obviously drove the car. So I think it's safe to say they patched things up and honestly, their success in NASCAR goes hand in hand. I don't think Chad would be quite as accomplished as he is without Jimmy and same goes for Jimmy. Without Chad, he's not a seven time champion. Ricky Rudd, the Red Rooster, Iron Man, I think one day will likely make the Hall of Fame. Carl Edwards with 28 Career Cup Series wins, an Xfinity Series championship. I think he's got a good shot. He'll just have to wait. Neil Bonnet, Alabama Gang. I mean, there's some great and deserving names, I think, on that list that unfortunately are going to have to wait at least one more year because Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss are more deserving. That's just the truth, and this is the way it times out. So I predict Jimmy and Chad make it in off the modern era ballot. The pioneer era ballot, you know, Donnie Allison being added to the list, is an interesting name. If I had a vote, and believe me, I would be horribly underqualified to vote on the pioneer era ballot, having never seen any of them race. All I know are the stories and the stats. <laughs> but if I did have a vote, I'd probably lean towards either Banjo Matthews or Ralph Moody. Sam Hart would be a cool pick though. He won two of the first three you know, Bush Series, Xfinity Series championships. AJ Foyt, I mean, he's a goat of racing, but you know, his NASCAR results, he did win a Daytona 500, but you know, only seven cup wins. Yeah. Donnie Allison was a rookie of the year winner, another member of the Alabama gang. Uh, a lot of great names, legends of the sport. I'd probably go with Moody or Banjo. Not sure exactly who, but again, I'm very underqualified. I've just read the stories. I didn't see any of these, these folks compete firsthand. Anyway, let's move on talking about legends of the sport. Now let's talk about a young driver trying to make a name for himself. Sheldon Creed is set to make his NASCAR Cup Series debut later this fall at Kansas, driving this pretty sleek looking live fast, well and sponsored number 78. It's been a tough go lately in the Xfinity series for Sheldon Creed, still looking for that first Xfinity win, but it wasn't all that long ago, 2020, 2021, where he won a combined eight truck series races. He was the 2020 truck series champion. I was critical of Sheldon Creed recently for intentionally wrecking Sammy Smith premeditatedly, even though his team was begging him not to. He got a 25 point penalty for that, deservedly so. I was a little hard on him for that because you know that was just dumb, but Sheldon Creed obviously has a ton of talent. I want to see him have more Xfinity Series success before we talk about jumping up to Cup one day full time, but uh, getting a little seat time in the next gen, I got no problem with it. I wish him the best of luck. 
Earlier this week, there was a report that another Australian supercars driver was planning to race in the NASCAR Cup Series later this summer, you know, follow in the footsteps of Shane Van Gisbergen. We will talk about that in just a few moments. Before we get to that story though, I want to react to what Dale Earnhardt Jr. said on Sirius XM NASCAR radio yesterday. Dale Earnhardt Jr., co-owner of Junior Motorsports in the Xfinity Series, was asked, of course, about the team's chances of going Cup Series racing in the near future, and here's what Dale Earnhardt Jr. said. There is zero movement on our end. Um, you know, me and my sister Kelly, uh, LW, and everybody at Junior Motorsports are always looking forward for an opportunity to get into the Cup Series. We're interested in that, but it has to make sense. You know, for me personally, to take such a large risk financially, I feel like I'm being a bit selfish. So, Dale Jr. made those comments on the morning drive. Again, Sirius XM NASCAR radio. They shared that clip on Twitter. Zero movement towards acquiring a Cup Series charter, going Cup Series racing. Uh, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. continued. He talked about some opportunities they've considered and what JRM would be looking to get out of running a Cup Series team. Me and Kelly, I think, would be more interested in a partnership of some kind. Um, and there's opportunities there, but haven't they haven't felt just right. We want to manage the team. We, we, we don't want to slap our name on a current product or a current organization. They have their own shop and all that. We don't want to do that. We want to, we want to run the team out of our building and, and manage the decisions on, on personnel and all of the opportunities that have come our way haven't checked those boxes. I don't think we're willing to compromise just to be there. I do wonder what kind of opportunities Dale Earnhardt Jr. is mentioning there. Who has Dale Jr. been talking to about a potential partnership? I immediately think Spire because of the Chevy connection, maybe the Steve Letarte connection. They're still a young team continuing to find their footing. I don't think Trackhouse would have made any sense. I know Dale Jr. recently went into business with Justin Marks as well as Kevin Harvick and Jeff Burton. They all now own the Cars Tour, but I don't know that Trackhouse and Dale Jr. would really mix. Those are two very big brands on their own. So I don't know who Dale Earnhardt Jr. is talking about there, but it sounds like Junior Motorsports has not yet found an opportunity or an avenue they're pleased with to go Cup Series racing, which I'm sure is disappointing to a lot of Junior fans out there. But I mean, let's just be realistic for a moment. If Dale Earnhardt Jr. wants to go Cup racing, needs to buy a charter. There's only 36 charters. A finite number of these little slips of paper that signify you're going Cup racing. <laughs> To buy a charter, someone has to be willing to sell their charter. And I mean, I look around the garage, who's selling? I know they're struggling right now, but Stuart Haas Racing, I don't think is looking to sell. Their deal with Ford requires they have four teams. I mentioned Spire a moment ago. I read y'all a quote earlier this week from Jeff Dickerson, co-owner of Spire that says they're not looking to sell. They're actually looking to acquire, if anything. Maybe they'd be open to a partnership like I suggested a moment ago, but I don't know. Live Fast Motorsports, they're just chugging along. Legacy Motor Club has struggled this year, but you know they're about to switch to Toyota. They have a new ownership group involved. Maybe Rick Ware Racing is interesting. They own two charters and you know, with Cody Ware and his off-track issues, you know, that team's future could be uncertain. But I haven't seen any indication that they're looking to sell. That's just me speculating. I don't see any teams looking to sell, but there's always someone that could surprise us. Chip Ganassi said it himself. He wasn't looking to sell either until Justin Marks and Trackhouse made him an offer he couldn't refuse. I know the Junior Motorsports or Dirty Mo Media folks always joke that Dale Earnhardt Jr. is very tight with money, so you know, I don't know that I see him making a Trackhouse-like offer. <laughs> but who knows? Honestly, though, I'm not sure now is a good time to jump into the NASCAR Cup Series to start a whole new team from scratch, considering how much uncertainty there still is around the sport's future. I mentioned this yesterday, but there is still no new media rights deal signed for 2025. The new revenue split between NASCAR and the teams hasn't been agreed upon either. NASCAR CEO Jim France doesn't want to make the charter system permanent. With that kind of uncertainty, I don't know how any Cup Series teams are forming long-term plans. Will future races be on Amazon? How will that affect viewership? How will that affect your ability to sell sponsorship? What new markets is NASCAR looking at? 
Canada, Mexico, could they actually go to Europe as some have suggested? Very real and very important questions that lead to a ton of uncertainty. So right now, if you're a potential Cup Series owner, someone who's looking in thinking, man, I'd like to scoop up a charter, but only if the price is right, this is a high risk, potentially high reward stretch. Maybe now is the time to take the plunge and you're betting on the next media rights deal being huge and the revenue split going the team's way. If that happens, then you'll probably look smart for getting in now when maybe the price was a little lower. But also, again, no one's selling. No one is actively looking to sell as far as I can tell. Teams are probably asking for the moon because they too are curious to see how the next split, the next revenue split media rights deal will work out. So the price is probably really high and considering the uncertainty, I'm not sure it's worth the risk. I agree with Dale Earnhardt Jr., unfortunately. I know everyone wants to see junior motorsports go cup racing. You know, they feel like they need to be there. But let's not discount the role Junior Motorsports currently fills in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Dale Earnhardt Jr. takes great pride in launching drivers' careers, engineers, crew members' careers. Remember this tweet from December? Josh Berry is a cup champion waiting for a cup owner who wants to be a cup champion owner. Dale was out there promoting his guy to other teams. Remember these stats that Joseph Srigley tweeted out recently? Since first opening their teams, Dale Jr., Brad Keselowski, and Kyle Busch have brought the best of the best to the NASCAR Cup Series. Of the 33 full-timers in 2023, 16 have had significant stints at either BKR, JRM, or Kyle Busch Motorsports. Keselowski has obviously moved up to Cup, but Kyle Busch in trucks, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Junior Motorsports in Xfinity, have been and continue to be extremely important steps on the NASCAR development ladder. Junior Motorsports is very good for NASCAR. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is a great asset to the entire industry. It'd be awesome to see them go cup racing one day, but the role they fill in the Xfinity series right now is an extremely important one. Now, real quick, before we wrap up this episode, the next Shane Van Gisbergen may be here sooner than we think. According to Andrew Clark of Auto Action, which is an Australian racing magazine, current Supercars championship contender Brody Kostecki is expected to announce that he will run the Indianapolis road course race next month. Kostecki is 25 years old. He's second in the Supercars points right now. Andrew Clark mentions that the deal would likely be with a Chevy team. He mentions RCR, although no details have been given out at this time. Clark did say, though, that whatever deal Brody Kostecki has, has been being worked on since before SVG came to Chicago and won. Brody Kostecki has raced NASCAR before. He ran the K&N Pro Series when he was a teenager. So racing in the United States is not a completely foreign concept to him. But boy, assuming this is true, he's got a tough act to follow. <laughs> Shane Van Gisbergen went out and won at Chicago. His first start, a huge stage. Kostecki running the Indy Road Course. Cup Series Field has a couple years of experience there. It's going to be tough to live up to the standards SVG set. Now, if he ends up racing for RCR, like in a third car, like the 31 or something. Oh, it wouldn't be the 31. Justin Haley has the 31. Uh, the 27? The uh, 29? I don't know. Would they do that? Probably not. What are the numbers? The 33? I guess they could pull out the 33. Whatever the case may be. If he drives for RCR, Tyler Reddick in an RCR car won the Indy Road Course race last year. So... I absolutely expect Brody Kostecki to be competitive. Top 10 for sure. Shoot, maybe even top five. Turn one will be a doozy, but if he can survive that, uh, then he may be all good. He may be very competitive. Uh, either way, I think it's cool that another Australian star driver wants to come race in NASCAR. I hope he does well. Honestly, I don't know that I want him to win. <laughs> I'm a NASCAR homer. I want my American drivers to do well. Come on. <laughs> when NASCAR designed the next-gen car, this next-gen platform, they took a lot of inspiration from Australian V8 supercars. So I guess these uh, SVG Brody Kostecki crossovers were inevitable. <laughs> Assuming this is true, how do you expect uh, Brody Kostecki to do in his NASCAR Cup Series debut? Will he live up to the lofty expectations Shane Van Gisbergen set? Leave a comment down below. That is going to do it for this episode, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Again, subscribe if you're new to the channel and you love NASCAR. And thank you to my Patreon supporters for going above and beyond. I greatly appreciate your support. I will see y'all again soon tonight, the SRX season 
3 debut on ESPN. I'll be watching. I hope you're watching as well. Then the Xfinity and Cup Series will race New Hampshire Saturday and Sunday. A lot of good racing this weekend. Fun time to be a fan. I'll talk to you all again real soon. Take care, y'all.